The, uh, the tracker industry has been evolving over the last number of years. Uh, it started off looking at static wind loads only. And from there, it moved to static with an allowance for dynamics. And that took the form of dynamic amplification factors. Um, that approach is acceptable for systems that are restrained or fixed tilt type systems. But once you allow a tracker to move, a structure to move, you then introduce aeroelastic effects. Die wind uh, is a hybrid approach which combines rigid model testing of wind, wind pressure and wind speed with another type of aeroelastic model testing, which is which we call sectional model testing. Uh, and both of those two can provide input to numeric simulations where we can model the response of the of the tracker in an accurate way. Uh, we can investigate the stability. So trackers are prone to aeroelastic instabilities uh, in torsion specifically, uh, such as torsional galloping and torsional flutter. And we can investigate the onset wind speeds of those instabilities. But prior to that, the tracker can experience excessive wind loads due to aeroelastic effects and self-excited wind forces. So this die wind approach, it's a hybrid approach which takes those two uh, uh, different types of e experiments, wind tunnel experiments, and in a time domain numeric simulation allows us to investigate the response of the structure uh, in an accurate and a, and a flexible way. We can, with one set of experiments uh, that's based on geometry, so you know, as long as the geometry doesn't change, we can investigate things like damping and changing the stiffness or frequency of a system. We can also look at changing the mass and the mass moment inertia properties. Um, and most interestingly, we can really evaluate other auxiliary devices that you know, someone may want to add to their system, such as a, a damper or a, a, a locking device. Um, those types of things we can investigate in the numeric simulation realm, um, which is not really that uh, practical with a full aeroelastic model testing. And really what we're trying to achieve is a robust design methodology that really uh, allows a client the flexibility of designing a system. And through this approach, we're increasing reliability. And through the lifespan of a project, uh, we're reducing costs because there's going to be a reduction in, in problems and, and failures of components. So there's, there's two other approaches that attempt to uh, look at the dynamic effects. The first approach is using uh, rigid model testing with pressure data and augmenting that with a dynamic amplification factor. And that dynamic amplification factor is an approximation to the inertial loads uh, of a system. Uh, that particular approach is only uh, acceptable when a structure does not move very much. So when motions are small, once motions become large enough, the inertial loads will go much higher than what you can predict with the dynamic amplification approach, but also aeroelastic forces, which are called self-excited forces, come into play, which increases the wind loads substantially compared to a, a, a static type con condition. And the only other way of, of predicting those loads is with a full aeroelastic model. And uh, it is a it is a an acceptable method um, if done properly, but it it's not uh, as flexible as the die wind approach in terms of designing a system. And that's really the advantage of the die wind system is the flexibility in terms of designing. So you can change parameters on the fly if you want to change your torque tube, and you don't have to go back into the wind tunnel. But if you were doing a full aeroelastic model, you'd have to go back into the wind tunnel to figure that out and which, which is not practical when you're making design changes on the fly. Yeah. The, the first benefit is to establish where the stability thresholds lie so that once you pass those thresholds, uh, uh, all bets are off in terms of, of the um, reliability and the structural integrity of a system. So you, you don't wanna be in, in that regime. 
Um, so establishing the stability threshold is important. So that's one advantage. The, the other main advantage is you, it allows you to predict um, in an accurate way the, the aeroelastic effects and the effect that that has on design wind loads. So it actually gives you all the important components to the wind loads that you need to design a system that is flexible. Um, if you want to if, if you want to avoid the flexibility and the aeroelastic effects, then you need to constrain the system. You need to go to a fixed tilt, tilt system where this method really is not needed. We, we truly believe that the industry as a whole needs to elevate the level of reliability of the, the tracker systems that are out there. Um, and to that light, this, this is a method that allows people the flexibility of designing systems appropriately. And from that perspective, we do want to see it as a, as a viable standard approach to designing a tracker that is allowed to move in the wind. Soltech uh, has been a, a great partner in developing this method. Uh, Soltech has asked tough questions of RWDI as we were going through the different phases uh, of the collaboration. They really asked tough questions that got us to examine our traditional approaches uh, in wind engineering and how they apply to a tracker. And because of those questions and, and really pushing us beyond where we were before, to develop this hybrid method, which, which takes multiple components that were already pre-existing, but put them into a package that allows a flexible design approach for Soltech and other manufacturers that, that want to uh, design a tracker.